couple of weeks ago, I was contacted by Xtool about um, to see if I wanted to try out one of their new P2 lasers, and um, I did have some of my viewers ask if I was going to get one to try, so I jumped on this, and I figured it would give me a chance to, um, to, you know, make them some videos to compare it to the other lasers, and you can see it was delivered by UPS, and it was a rainy day, so I just kind of had to wait till it stopped raining to move it around back, load it on the cart, and roll it in, and you can see it's really nicely packaged. Um, UPS can't read the up arrows or anything else. They um, had it standing up on the side and, you know, mounting around in the truck and stuff. But actually, it was packaged really good. Um, I don't know what kind of foam X-Tool used, but it's something special that can really take impacts and shocks. Um, it's, everything arrives perfectly. And they do spend a lot of time in their packaging. Even that cardboard is like as strong as plywood. It's like four layer cardboard. I've never seen anything like it. So this is what it looks like on packing it. It's fairly heavy. It's uh, over 100 pounds. So I kind of struggled with it by myself to, to get it uh, unpacked here. And I'm just going to slide it on my bench tempor temporarily before we move it over into place. Just to kind of give you a little look at you know how it, how it arrives and what it looks like when you get it. And with a lot of packaging material, so I just slid it on the bench and then started cutting away some of the foam there so I could slide that out from under it. And I got it backwards right there, but um, I'll turn around in a second. And definitely, um, this is one of the higher end lasers. Um, it's fairly pricey, but it has features that are kind of unbelievable for a laser in this class. Um, a lot of new technology in it, and uh, it's really a sharp looking unit too. Um, packaged well inside all the uh, spare parts, sir. Um, and as always, they do give you a really good manual to get going with. There's very little assembly on this to do. They give you some materials to get going with, some plywood and cardboard and a couple of sheets of plastic. And they come with everything that you need to get started. USB cables and um, a screwdriver that you need and a couple extra screws here. The um, hose for exhausting it. And also the antifreeze. It's nice that they ship these with net without the antifreeze in them. You don't have to worry about it spilling inside the machine. That's a, that's a really um, good feature. And then I pulled that off and inside it's packaged nice and first thing i noticed is there's um, no honeycomb in here there's slats instead they are really sharp looking slats and um the more i use it the more i like them i'll show you as i go on here but basically there's one screw that has to be removed and if you look in the manual this is all you know listed right there to be able to pull out that tray there and get the foam out of it and also the slots, they come out really easy. You can see very versatile how you can move these around and, um, you know, just locate your materials and stuff. And it does come with some nice clamps, too. And there are two sheets of 3 millimeter plastic down there, under there. And then the bottom drawer actually pulls out. Uh, some of that desiccant in there, too. And that pad comes out. And there also is a riser that um, I'll show you in the end. I actually did wind up receiving that, too. I didn't realize I was going to get the whole kit, but um, UPS showed up again. So uh, this is kind of like the first video about it. And I'm sure that there'll be p plenty more trying to learn how to use it and uh, all the features of it. And this is just basically, you know, getting started in a couple simple projects that I tried. And those are the clips to hold the material down, and they do work nice once you figure out how to get them in there. And there's some material, your antifreeze, uh, screwdriver that you need, and that's about it. Um, the case is pretty much, the outer case on it is all plastic uh, under protective layer on that black area there, the window area. And you have to be careful with that because that does scratch easy. And it's got one button you can see there, just kind of like the Ohm Tech unit. 
And I'm even going to pull off all the safety labels and stuff. And you can see it's uh, really a nice looking unit. Um, well made, fit and finish is nice. It's uh, All the outside of it is plastic. Um, has some really nice gas springs on there for opening it up. And again, uh, everything X Tool sells, they give you a good manual for it. And they also have plenty of online help if you um, have any problem setting them up. I'm just going to go through the basics of setting this up uh, because it would take me hours to, to get it all, you know, the way they've got it videoed and everything else online. And here you see there's two cameras on here. Comes with two cameras for um, locating material. And the laser head is, no, oh, I can't get that off. I didn't quite pull hard enough. I was afraid of breaking something, but there's some magnets in there that pops right off, I found out. And the laser, everything's really nice in there. The air assist line, and they're using the same type of bearings as they use on all their D1s. And I tell you what, those things are pretty much bulletproof, I found out. So, you know, I'm really happy the way the D1 performs and uses the same system it looks like everything accessible nice gas spring that's really nice that the cover doesn't slam down or anything helps pick it up it's nice having the front of it open too so you can access uh, your work bed a lot easier without reaching down in there so that's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, the inside of it there is all metal and the outside case is all plastic. So it looks like it's fairly fireproof. And there's a USB-C port and a network port on this side there. Go around to the front. It has a one-touch button for controlling it. And it even has a nice EMO built in on the side there where you can reach around and hit easily. In the back side, there is a power switch with the power input. And the amazing thing is there's like a fire suppression system that they're coming out with that'll hook up to those connectors I showed you. Now the biggest pain was to um, get going. You have to put water in the system. And there's 12 screws that you have to take out. Um, not sure why they didn't put magnets or something on them. And then you pry that cover off the back there. And that gives you access to the uh, the water tank and the pump and the laser tube and everything. So it comes empty. Nothing in there. And it comes with this jug of antifreeze. And you have to follow the instructions of how much to mix for the temperature that your um, laser will be subject to. So I just put it, the, I did the lowest amount of antifreeze because I don't think I'll ever be freezing this. But um I mix that up and uh, they give you the, the milliliters and I just so happen to have a little beaker here to mix it with and if you don't they say dump the antifreeze into something else and that container is actually marked well for you know the measurements so it's just a matter of um, you know getting the mixture right and putting the correct amount of uh, liquid into the tank now I've got to fill this a couple times because it's a just a small beaker that I've got. But. And they do give you the, the funnel that you need and everything else. So pretty much this is the um, main thing you have to do to get going. So that's the, uh, the initial coolant that's required to keep the laser tube cool. And I, I don't know what would happen if you didn't do this first, but I think you'd probably damage a laser tube. And then after you run it, there's an additional amount that you have to put in. So you use about a half a gallon of distilled water. So then at this point, I'm just going to stick the cap back on there. It's almost full up to the top. And then turn on the power switch. Make sure the EMO switch is released. And you'll see the coolant circulating there. So that's a good sign. And then um, I let it... I just let it circulate for about a minute and turned it off and went back and did the final fill. And it turned out that the, the level was perfect with the numbers that they gave. So, um, you know, it's really, it's really easy if you just follow all their guides. 
And looking down in there, I was pretty amazed at the way they did the mirrors and this and stuff. I'll show you in a second. It, there's a tube, and 55 watt is about the maximum that they could squeeze into uh, laser this side because the tube gets longer as the wattage goes up. And there they have the uh, adjustable mirrors on it, and those mirrors actually pop out too for cleaning. So that's really a, you know, a really good point about this one. That's a problem I always complain about on the Polar is that thing is uh, too tough to clean everything. So I put that cover back on, and now I'm going to move it over into uh, the place I made for it. Now, I did wind up having to rearrange my whole shop to fit this in. Though. It did take a couple days just to, you know, get things set up. And I bought another one of those Craftsman cabinets that was on sale. Actually, I bought it for all my sublimation stuff, but then I got the uh, offer for this laser, so I decided, okay, laser goes on instead. So they're kind of side by side there. And you can see um, that whole side of my shop was completely rearranged to get this in. So got another nice cabinet there for storage, and um, everything else is really tight in here. And here's my uh, D1 Pro back there. Still use that one, too computer set up that's running everything and there's the ohm tech laser which i'll be you know comparing a little better in future videos so you get to see them side by side you can see i had to move all my sanding station and you know all kinds of stuff around it to get this in but i figured it was worth it to um to try the latest and the greatest laser so first thing I did is uh, loaded the Xtool Creative software and updated the firmware. That was real easy. Then they tell you to align the mirrors. Well, mine was kind of knocked out. The, uh, they weren't quite perfectly on center. And I tried doing it in the front first. Uh, there they have a uh, nice little window that you can pull out to get in there and adjust the mirrors. And this is a really great feature. If you follow the instructions, they do adjust nice. But my problem was, um, it wasn't just adjusting this one mirror here to get everything aligned. Something must have gotten shaken in shipping, so I had to... Actually, I couldn't get it perfect in all four corners, so I wound up going back and having to adjust the mirrors in the back. Which meant actually taking out all the um, those screws I had put back in. But you can see, it does take a while to... Uh, to get it done and I say do it at all four corners of the axis and there I had to take out the screws to adjust the other mirror. So now first thing I'm going to do is they say you can do it on you can laser on toothpicks. So I had these little food uh, forks or miniature things I decided to try and I put some text on them located it on them and said okay let me just see how accurate the camera is. And one thing that I did find in the settings was this thing is uh, really awesome. It's, it's got a uh, two-stage air assist. You have an engraved setting and a cut setting, which is something that every laser really needs, and I'm trying to figure out how to do on the Ohm Tech. But this one comes in the factory with it, and uh, you know, it really, really does do a good job when you're um, cutting and engraving. Um, it's a really fine tune, so I'm very happy about that. So I got these uh, forks all located, and I just use the uh, settings that come in the Xtool Creative Space. And I ran it, and you can see pretty much perfectly centered, so the cameras do work really good. I'll show you a little better in a second. And the camera is really fuzzy here, but uh, they, they did come out nice. Um, they were a little bit light though, so I just hit the job again and I ran the second time with those settings and they came out, you know, dark enough for my needs. And there's a little display, shows you that the cover is locked, you're running on uh, the uh, USB cable and the percentage of the job that's being done. So, pretty much, um... You know, I got them done, and then I figured, okay, I found some other smaller um, little pick, toothpicks like, and decided to try to locate on them. And there you can see this is the Creative Space software. And first thing I'm going to do is gonna try to take a shot and blow it up there with the camera that's really um, pretty much precision. 
And so there's a good shot of the actual parts. And these are about a millimeter and a half square. So they're kind of tiny, a little bit bigger than a toothpick. And I'm going to try to try to measure them. And I had I had a little bit of trouble with this because the first time it measured the um, the walnut board underneath them that I'm, I have them taped to. So finally I had to go back, and you really have to watch when you do this because sometimes it'll grab the wrong surface. And I went back, and that time it got it perfect. So now I've got my focus set. That's all it takes to, to set the focus. And then text, real easy to do on this software. And just locate it. And you can blow it up real big to try to, you know, get an item on a small, or get text on a small item. And then adjust it to fit. Now, just trying to drag it like that makes it kind of hard to change the angle, I found. And what you have to do is, uh, there I stretch out the text. And I tried to array it on the parts here. I didn't have luck with it. I didn't set it up right, I don't think. So I just moved it manually for now. Because I'm still really learning the software. So I'm not sure whether it's me or the software. And then I found out if you go up there in the top and you just type in the angle, it allows you to, to you know, just twist the, the text just a little bit at a time until you get it right on a, you know, little toothpick. And, you know, it's kind of precision little stuff that's uh, kind of unbelievable. You can't do with any of the other lasers that I've tried so far. So this is pretty amazing where you um, can easily locate on a part whatever you want artwork text or anything else and then you just um send it and once it goes to the laser you hit the button on the laser and it starts engraving and uh, there it is they came out absolutely perfect um, first try so that was you know really a you can see it's just really tiny you can hardly see it but um, came out perfect center and everything else that's pretty amazing just uh, the precision of those cameras with no no adjustments you don't have to um, set them up or anything they work like that out of the box and then I decided to try an engraving this is uh, one that I had done for coasters for my wife so I just took that and just loaded it in opened it up in creative space and added a border around the outside and tried cutting it in some three millimeters and there you can see it's uh came out nice just for the first try it was a little bit light for my liking though um that was using the factory settings so i'm gonna just adjust them and uh, run another one just to see what difference it makes by you know changing the speed by or the power by um just uh, two percent and the smoke actually all goes out the back there's no problem with smoke those uh, slats really do make it clear quickly plus the cover stays locked until the smoke is evacuated and there you can see there's the second one I did with a little bit more power and it came out perfect so you know once you get the settings down this is uh, really pretty amazing and then I took the same thing and I uh, shrunk it down and there you can see that's a, that's a percentage of the job done into a little keychain about an inch in diameter I wanted to see you know what would happen on acrylic with it. so this is a little acrylic keychain that I made with the same thing on it and pretty amazing um, I engraved acrylic with the paper on it and then I removed the paper and it's kind of hard to see there but it came out perfect and then uh, these bees here, something that everybody's always interested in. And I lost all the files that I made them on the CNC router with and stuff. So I recreated something that's close to them and decided I was going to try to make that as a project. And um, maybe it's files that I can share to um, the people that get this laser um, have something to play with. And first thing, I had some yellow acrylic. And I'm going to cut out the body with that. I use a setting for 3mm black acrylic and basically um, it cut perfect. 
So there you can see, no smell, no smoke coming out the air. I do have it exhausted outside right now. And perfect cuts, really smooth, clean cuts. So, you know, it, it does, uh, it does do a really nice job. And then I actually did the black parts of the bee. And I'm putting them on a piece of uh, black acrylic here. And again, you can see the camera allows you to blow up areas and look at them and have, you know, so you can ac accurately locate things so that they, you, you save material and um, really, it, uh, you know, you know exactly where they're going to be. So you take a, a wide angle shot first and then you just go back and tell the area you want to blow up. And then, you know, same thing in um set the thickness and it's all autofocus you don't have to worry about anything now um it's going to be a while till they have all this worked into light burn i understand so you're gonna really have to learn how to use this creative space to take care of the advanced features because this is just like the tip of them that i'm showing you in this video we'll get into more of them as you know i make more videos but so again, this is all, you know, a learning process for me. I've never really used this software a lot, but um, it really has become a lot more advanced than the last time I used it. And the good thing is you buy this laser, you don't have to uh, buy light burn to get going. So here we go, I'm going to cut out the, uh, the black part. And again, you can see uh, nice cuts. Everything comes out perfect, uh, no smoke in the room or anything, and uh, uh, nice thin cuts here. Everything pops right out. So it's definitely, you know, really easy to, to get started with laser. It is a premium laser, though, when you look at the price tag on it, I will say that. But um, the more I play with it, the more I think it's really worth it. Okay, so there's my B. That's the start of it. That's one side. Just had to cut the other second side. And then I'm just going to super glue this together now. I'm not sure if this would be durable outdoors. Um, I don't know how UV resistant the acrylic is or the glue or anything else. So this is kind of just like a one to put in a window or something like that I'm making. And I'm just going to put some super glue on each of these parts, spread it out so I've got good coverage on it. And I'm not going to use any of the accelerator because that uh, actually can fog up certain uh, acrylics I've seen. So I'm just going to let it dry for 15-20 minutes before I flip it. And, uh, you know, that's... Pretty much, um, it looks pretty close to the, the ones that I did on the CNC router and I painted, so I'm happy with how it's coming out. And again, then I just got to flip the other side and glue that one together too. And then give it a, you know, a while to, to set up before I touch it. Now I'm going to make the, um, the wings for it. I made them out of clear. And I found out one thing with these slats. You have to be careful the way you cut it. See how that one piece flipped up? I should have oriented the, um, the wings in the other direction so they wouldn't do that. But I'm learning as I go along. And you just want to be careful that you don't hit the head. And this was actually three millimeters. I wish I had one and a half to make the wings out of. But they cut. You can see this is clear. And they did cut perfect. Again, uh, and... You know, these may not be the perfect size for it or anything, but I'm happy with how they came out. And then for mounting the wings, I found a um, spacer that I had a nylon one. And I made that center hole underside. And I went back, and that's cutting three-eighths of an inch of acrylic there, three layers of it. I cut the hole point one millimeter undersize, and it fit perfect with the uh, curve. So that's going to be the pivot point for the wings. So that guy is pretty much ready to go. And then I decided I was going to try to cut a base out of walnut. This is about 10.5 millimeter thick walnut. And 
At first I just tried the um, 12 millimeter plywood setting and that turned out to be a mistake. That was three passes um, to cut it and it just it just wasn't the right setting to use for walnut. You'll see in a second, but it, it kind of burned the backside pretty bad. And that was three passes, and everything came out uh, burned on the edge of the bed and on the backside. So I decided to, um, yeah, there you can see it pretty much burned. So then I decided to take it down to two passes and see what happened. And again, um, it turned out that I could see it was cutting through the first pass, and then I did the second pass, and it just burned the backside again. So that's that's about 10.5 millimeters walnut, and I do have it hooked up to my fan now, but I'll show you that I'm going to be trying to filter also in the future. And then I set it up to do one pass on the walnut, and it came out perfect. So it cuts 10.5 millimeter walnut uh, really beautifully you can see nice straight not too bad of burning on the back surface or anything so you're best to try to cut with one pass no matter what you do and then I went back and decided I've got to bend these acrylic uh, wings just to make us all catch the air and this is that bender that I built a couple of videos back I don't know why somebody like Gextool doesn't have something like this because Really, when you're doing a lot of acrylic with these lasers, uh, that's what they're really great for. Uh, if you can bend it, it just opens up a whole new world for you. And I do have a video back a little ways um, if you're interested in making a simple one like this. But there you can see um, just a little bit of hot nichrome wire and get really nice clean bends. <clears throat> So I got one done, and then I went back, and I, I cut four. Um, I didn't know whether I wanted two wings or four wings on each side or, you know, what I was going to do. And actually, I'm going to get some 0 0.06 acrylic and probably cut one piece with four wings on it, but that'll be in the future. And then I took put a dowel in that piece of wall that I cut out. And I'm wrapping that with just some leather to hide the nasty old dowel that I had. A little bit of super glue to hold it in place. And I ordered a piece of brass tubing from Amazon to uh, make the pivot point there. Now that is um, a hollow tube, so I put it. In, I had to put it in my wood lathe there to drill it out and tap it with M4, and then I had to assemble it. And I decided to try two, two wings, on, well, four wings actually on each side. I started out with washers, but they were a little too thick. They made it um, kind of line to line so it didn't turn good. So I took them out eventually. And just went with the, the couple of spacers there. And then I used um, button head screws, M4s, with uh, those internal teeth lock washers to hopefully keep things from slipping and moving. It would definitely be nice to have like a 3D printed uh, wing or something like that. But, you know, this is just simple starting out trying to make something that um, would be easy to make. And another one of the internal tooth washers there to dig into the brass and the plastic. And there it is put together. I've got a little bit of compressed air blowing on it now. And you can see actually it's... It, Work better than ones in the garden having uh, the four wings on it and stuff. So looks like it's a winner. A um, couple couple things I have to uh, fix on it, and the file will be ready to go. I just thought that would be a fun project because so many people have been interested in you know trying to to make something like that. So this will be a a real easy way to do it. And a couple days after the laser arrived, a UPS truck backed up to my house again, and I had no idea they were sending all the rest of the accessories for it, the feeders, the rotary, the air filter, and the riser, and everything else. So you'll be seeing a lot more videos in the future as I figure out how to put this all together and make it work and take care of some of the features. And I did find a local place that had some nice uh, multiply Baltic birch alternative plywood. 
and some MDF for the feeder and stuff like that for those videos. Hard to believe those couple of sheets are almost $500. <clears throat> Things are expensive these days. So anyhow, I just, you know, this is just to start. This does not show half of what this machine can do, but I just figured I'd, you know, give you an idea of uh, how simple it is to get going with it and um, just trying to learn the software and use the Xtool software. And really, um, after a couple of hours, you start to get comfortable with it. And you can do pretty amazing things with all these, uh, you know, multiple cameras and the alignment features and stuff like that. It does do a beautiful job. I'm definitely looking forward to trying it on some curved surfaces in um, the next video. That should be fun. But anyhow, this is just a, um, you know, a quick first look at it and just uh, starting to get into it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.